Good, hello everyone! Welcome to Fins and Whiskers! In today's video, we are going to do a gerbil cage tour. Before we begin, make sure you boop that subscribe button and the snoot for more gerbil content. I know there's a lot on the waiting list that I'm going to make for you guys, such as safe flowers and a daily gerbil care routine, so stay tuned for that. So first and foremost, I am going to address the sunlight leaking into their enclosure. I know not a lot of people agree with this, however, this only happens for half of the year and I usually blocked out the sunlight in the past, however, even the smallest leaked in sunny spot they love to nap in, so I only leave non-harsh light spots in for them. That being said, it's still well ventilated when the sunlight is out. I still leave the window open so that air circulates the room as well as my door. And so I use egg crate as the lid and I do have coroplast to diffuse some of the light and also providing a block and so they cannot bite the egg crate. So it just works all, all around. They still have open spaces where the air can circle through, they just can't get to that area and chew the egg crate, which would be terrible for them. So we are going to begin with the left half side of the enclosure. I blocked off the side of the dividers with rocks, heavy rocks, so they can't bite the coroplast. But on this side, this is where I keep their sand bath, their salad dish, water dish, and their wheel and they can use this without getting bedding all over it as they would if the divider was not there. Trust me, I have been there <laughs> and so that's why the divider exists. I've had no problem with them being territorial at all. They are siblings and so that does make it a bit better. However, on this side, I made sure to also make sure that the rocks weighed more than they did so they really cannot move those rocks there's a lot of smaller ones that they can move and push around but there are heavy rocks on both sides of the enclosure that they just cannot move so they will not be able to get to the coroplast at all and of course the slit opening i have also made terracotta clay set and dry so that they cannot chew the sides of the opening where they can go in and out either. But that being said, on this side we have a coconut hide which is on top of the chala wood that leads to both sides of the enclosure. And I have seen all three of them fit in here and it's quite impressive. Since this part of the enclosure is completely divided, I've also poured out all the reptis sand and so they have sand in this area and I have seen them play and use the sand more than ever so it really worked out having just sand completely all over the space of this floor. It's not a big deal. I will have to sift the sand now and again but that's something I did anyway. And Bini has made it a mission to try and escape this prison he's made, but it's not going to work. <laughs> and we have a 9.5 inch wheel and they love using it. So I know a lot of people are concerned about them peeing on the wheel. So I always keep carton paper and cardboard covering the circle of the wheel so that if they do pee, it's easily replaceable and affordable. So that has worked a lot because they do <laughs> pee in my experience. It also isn't blocking anything they would be interested in chewing so they don't chew it either. I also keep their water dish and their salad dish here just so it stays away from bedding and does not get absorbed or messy and I also keep a hide in here so they are comfortable in this space as well and they truly do love it. I've seen all three of them fit in there. Now moving on to their bedding. We can see their lovely burrows. They always do it up front of the tank to my satisfaction because I get to show their amazing tunnels. And they usually keep a lot of the hard carton and sisal twine huts and their wooden houses. So hold those tunnels and they work really well. If you haven't seen my previous gerbil videos, I explain a lot about how they do that especially the boredom breaker one and they lead up to several lanes where they can exit towards the top 
this is one of them. <laughs> that whole tunnel leads to this and can be accessed easily for them. There's several holes on the top, but this is the most distinguished of all because it's held by carton that I kept on the left hand side before, but now I moved to that side. <laughs> They've really been using it to their advantage, so I'm definitely leaving it there. And for the bedding, I am using a mix of two types of KT's Clean and Cozy, the natural bedding and the white bedding. And I'm also using hay and moss. These hold their chambers and tunnels very well, so I definitely recommend that. And also aspen wood shavings, however, I haven't used it this time. Their bedding is also 15 inches tall. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys found inspiration for your gerbils enclosure. And let me know what your gerbils enclosure looks like. And I may feature it in the next video. The best way you can do this is to add this on your Instagram story if you have Instagram. And tag me at Fins and Whiskers. You can also do this on Twitter at Fins and Whiskers as well. But that is it for now. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>